I'm a bit too nervous. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to Morning Prayer. Lovely to see you. Uh, today we're remembering John Coleridge Patterson, first Bishop of Melanesia, and his companions who were martyrs in 1871. To be honest, I'm not actually sure that they were martyrs, but they were, they were murdered. I'm not sure they were murdered for their faith, but anyway, um, what can I tell you about them? Co uh, Coleridge Patterson was born in 1827 in a highly privileged environment. He was recruited by Bishop George Selwyn of New Zealand to oversee the church's work in Melanesia. Melanesia. So that includes places like the Solomon Islands, uh, but a lot of islands dotted around uh, a long, long way apart. He was an exceptional linguist, learned Maori on his outward voyage. Um, and it says here that he mastered 24 of the 96 languages of Melanesia, which to me is everyone. totally incredible. Hello, Jenny. Yes, sorry, I'm a bit um, <laughs> Nonetheless, all these long distances that he was having to sail around from one place to the other, um, and the isolation and loneliness took his took their toll. Um, and affected his health. Um, nonetheless, he was much loved. He started to query the traditional Victorian connection between Christianity and literacy, questioning its relevance for adults in a non-literate society. Um, sadly, he was clubbed to death on Nukapu Island in 1871. He and his companions uh, were hit by a hail of arrows and subsequently died of tetanus. And it says here, this was almost certainly a revenge killing after local men and boys being kidnapped to work on the Queensland cotton plantations. So that's why I say it's not really so much a martyrdom for the faith, but a very unfortunate a uh, murder, I would describe it. But anyway, they are martyrs. I mean, obviously they're in a dangerous position in that environment. Anyway, any thoughts about any of that? I mean, I would, I would, I would draw the line at being assigned to the Solomon Islands and Melanesia <laughs> today, let alone then. <laughs> it sounds. Horrendous, yeah. yeah. You're okay with physics then, Marty? Physics? Physics? Yes. That's pretty remote. Yeah, the, na the natives are not quite so threatening. It's not the fear of the natives, it's just having to like kind of go on a like, you know, five day voyage from one little island to another and all that sort of thing. It must have been really, um, really difficult. If you, I mean, I had to look on on Google Maps. I mean, they really are enormously spread out, these different oh, islands. Yeah. Um, yeah. Must have been extremely hard. The strength of their faith must have been enormous. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then that's the grace that God, God provides them with to do it, even though it's hard. Yeah. You have that. <laughs> yeah. Really from him, really. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, so let's make a start then. O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall be praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all to you, be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, and in these last days, you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your spirit ever renew our lives and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. Uh, 
as we rejoice in the gift of this new day. So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Amen. So, um, Jenny, would you like to do the psalm with me? Yes. Great, thank you. We have heard with our ears, O God, our forebears have told us all that you did in their days in time of old. How with your hand you drove out nations and planted us in, and broke the power of peoples and set us free. For not by their own sword did our ancestors take the land, nor did their own arm save them. But your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance, because you were gracious to them. You are my king and my God, who commanded salvation for Jacob. Through you we drove back our adversaries. Through your name we trod down our foes. For I did not trust in my bow, it was not my own sword that saved me. It was you that saved us from our enemies and put our, our adversaries to shame. We gloried in God all the day long and were ever praising your name. But now you have rejected us and brought us to shame and go not out with our armies. You have made us turn our backs on our enemies and our enemies have despoiled us. You have made us like sheep to be slaughtered and have scattered us among the nations. You have sold your people for a pittance and made no profit on their sale. You have made us the taunt of our neighbours, the scorn and derision of those that are round about us. You have made us a byword among the nations, among the peoples, they wag their heads. My confusion is daily before me and shame has covered my face. At the taunts of the slanderer and reviler, at the sight of the enemy and avenger. All this has come upon us, though we have not forgotten you and have not played false to your covenant. Our hearts have not turned back, nor our steps gone out of your way. Yet you have crushed us in the haunt of jackals and covered us with the shadow of death. If we have forgotten the name of our God or stretched out our hands to any strange God. Will not God search it out? For he knows the secrets of the heart. But for your sake are we killed all the day long and are as counted as sheep for the slaughter. Rise up, why sleep, O Lord? Awake and do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face and forget our grief and oppression? Our soul is bowed down to the dust, our belly cleaves to the earth. Rise up, O Lord, to help us and redeem us for the sake of your steadfast love. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, <laughs> now, and now, and now, and now, and now, Yeah, real uh, psalm, prayer of desperation, calling for God to wake up and help, yeah? Um, yeah, we've all been in that place, I think. Yeah. Um, but one, one of the verses, I can't remember which one that says, we have not forgotten you. So they still know God's power. They, be, but they yeah. believe that he would one day save them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, right, we're going to click through to 2 Chronicles 2, 1 16. <coughs> Soda, have you got that? Or not? Does that chronicles. Two, yeah. Yeah. Two Chronicles 2, 1 to 16. Yeah. Yes, please. Okay, great. <clears throat> Solomon decided to build a temple for the name of the Lord and a royal palace for himself. Solomon cons conscripted 70,000 laborers and 80,000 stone quarters in the ill country with 3,600 to oversee them. Solomon sent word to the king Uram of Tai. Once you dealt with my father David and sent him Sida to build himself a house to live in. I am now about to build a house for the name of the Lord, my God, and dedicate it to him for offering fragrant incense before him and for the regular offering of the rolls, rolls of bread and for burnt offerings morning and evening on the Sabbaths and on the new moon, moons 
and the appointed festivals of the Lord our God, as ordained forever for Israel. The house that I'm about to build will be great, for our God is greater than other gods. But who is able to build him a house since heaven, even highest heaven, cannot contain him? Who am I to build a house for him except a, part, a place to make offerings before him? So now send me an artisan skilled to work in gold, silver, bronze, and iron, and in purple, crimson, and blue fabrics. Trained also in engraving to join the skilled workers who are with me in Judah and Jerusalem, whom my father David provided. Send me also cedar, cypress, and algum timber from Lebanon. For I know that your servants are skilled in cutting Lebanon timber. My servants will work with your servants to prepare timber for me in abundance. For the house I'm about to build will be great and wonderful. I will provide for your servants, those who cut the timber, 20,000 cores of crushed wheat, 20,000 cores of barley, 20,000 baths of wine, and 20,000 baths of oil. Then King Uram of Tyre answered a letter that he sent to Solomon. Because the Lord loves his people, he has made you king over them. Uram also said, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who made heaven and earth, who has given King David a wise son, endowed with discretion and understanding, who will build a temple for the Lord and a royal palace for himself. I have dispatched Umran Abi, a skilled artisan, endowed with understanding, the son of one of the Danite women, women. His father, a Tyrian, is a trained, is trained to work in gold, silver, bronze, iron, stone, and wood, and in purple, blue, and crimson fabrics, and fine linen, and to do all sorts of engraving and execute any design that will be assigned to him. With your artisans, the artisans of my Lord, your father, David. Now, as for the wheat, barley, oil, and wine, of which my Lord has spoken, let him send them to his servants. We will cut whatever timber you need from Lebanon and bring it to you as rafts by sea to Joppa. You will take it up to Jerusalem. Thank you, Pesola. Uh, great. Um, well, we get a real picture there of the lavish uh, temple that Solomon is going to build for the Lord. No expense spared, yeah? Mm -hmm. All these precious stones and beautiful materials, yeah? yeah. Skilled artisans, yeah? Mm -hmm. Kind of makes you think of the, like, great medieval cathedrals in Europe, you know, where no expense was spared to create these beautiful buildings yeah all right uh let's scroll down and we'll read the passage from mark um maybe sue riley you'd like to read that for us yeah yeah i'm just getting there uh, mark. okay mark 12 28 to 34 one of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another and seeing that he answered them well he asked him which commandment is the first of all jesus answered the first is hear o israel the lord our god the lord is one you shall love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength the second is this you shall love your neighbor as yourself there is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You're right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other, and to love him with all heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbour as oneself. This is much more important than, than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. Mm. 
So I love this teaching from Jesus, kind of boiling it down to the basics, yeah? Love God and love your neighbor, yeah? Yes. Um, we can overcomplicate things, can't we? And that's mm. where we get into a mess. Mm. Mm. I mean, I think that's what old um, Coleridge Patterson was really talking about, wasn't he? You know, in terms of his critique of the Victorian, you know, missionary project that, um, they were trying to impose a kind of English style Christianity on everyone, which was you know, complex and um, not being very helpful. But here, Jesus in his context of society says, look, you know, it's very simple, love God and love your neighbor. I mean, it's not easy, it's not easy to do that. Um, but, you know, it can be as simple as that, you know? Mm-hmm. And Paul, Paul said something similar, actually. He said, true and pure and undefiled religion is looking after the widows, the fatherless, well, loving your neighbor practically, mm-hmm. and keeping yourself connected to Jesus, unspotted from the world, so you don't let the things of the world affect you negatively, but you just mm-hmm. maintain your connection with God. Mm-hmm. Makes me think of all those uh, poor Canadian children who were murdered, um, you know, by sort of missionary schools and so on um, that they dug up recently in Canada. Mm. And if, if the people had only just <laughs> stuck to those verses, that wouldn't have happened, would it? No, that's, that's yeah, exactly. I mean, these are the, the great benchmarks, I think, of them. You know, if you're trying to interpret scripture and you're not quite sure, this, you know, thinking, oh, this means this, then measure it against this, yeah? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right. Let's scroll down then. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will shape <coughs> your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Trust, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, heart. heart. and be not wise in, your, in your, own your own son. So let's pray then, Lord. Um, we do lift our church to you for your blessing. We thank you for Jesus teaching. Help us to keep those two great commandments always in our minds and always use them as a measure of how we are applying our faith, Lord. Um, also, Lord, I lift you, uh, Leslie and um, her home group this morning, your blessing on them as they meet uh, to read your word and to enjoy each other's company and to learn together, Lord, uh, your Holy Spirit to be um, on, especially on Leslie at that time. Um, For all those who are sick and um, particularly praying for Jenny, um, for your health, Jenny, Lord, and um, that you receive the treatment you need and that you are healed also lord for the sharma family and for all who mourn especially for catherine forster and her sons bring hope and healing and comfort in jesus name amen Amen. Amen. heavenly father thank you for your many blessings for the opportunities that you have given me Give me direction, Lord, and give me strength. Give me open eyes. And I pray today, especially for Anna Lee. Mm. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Lord, thank you for a new day and for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your abundant blessings to us. Thank you, Lord, that we could come here to another day at the start of the new week, Lord, to praise your name and to share and study your word. Lord, help us to always remember that we ought to love others as we love ourselves and to, to love you as well. 
Thank you, Lord, for your love for us so that we are able to love others and that we could show this love in practical ways. Thank you, Lord, for the peace that you bring and we pray, Lord, for all situations around the world and for each country and for each individual. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us and hearing and answering our prayers. This is my prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Father, as, as David said in his song, he's, he was confused and because you didn't seem to be working in his life at that time. There was trouble all around him. And Father, you know there are times when we feel the same. Um, when it's difficult to see you, difficult to see you at work. But Lord, thank you that you are faithful and that you never leave us, forsake us. You are always working in our lives, no matter, no matter what the outward circumstances may seem like. So we thank you. Thank you for your ever presence with us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God of all tribes and peoples and tongues who called your servant John Coleridge Patterson to witness in life and death to the gospel of Christ amongst the people of Melanesia. Grant us to hear your call to service and to respond trustfully and joyfully to Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom, your kingdom come, your will be done, done on earth and as in heaven. heaven. Give us today, give us day, day, our day, bread. Bread. forgive us our sins, and we forgive those sins sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the kingdom, the power, power and glory are yours, yours. now, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to the Lord. Amen. 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 Great. Well, that's a lovely start to the day, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Thank you very much. And the week. The week. And the week, yeah. Okay. Um,